What's going on guys, Copert here. Welcome back to my Battlefield 4 Gun Locker series, a series where I review and analyze all the weaponry in Battlefield 4. Today we're going to take a look at the AR-160. This is the new assault rifle we just got with the Naval Strike DLC. Now on PC we've had this weapon for about two or three weeks now, so I've gotten some extended play with it. Um, basically, I wanted to hold off on reviewing it because I wanted to A, make sure that DICE finalized the stats on this gun. We know they like to tweak things before the maps and as the maps come out. Uh, we saw that with the AWS, the new support weapon. And I want to take a look at the Synthic stats and look at the numbers and see how they correlate to my general opinion uh, through usage of this weapon. Uh, the AR-160 is based off of the ARX-160 in real life. It's a modular assault rifle manufactured by Beretta. It was developed for the Italian Future Soldier program and was launched in 2008. So to take a look at the pros for this weapon, first of all, it's got the standard assault rifle damage model. It's also got a very respectable rate of fire at 700 rounds a minute. Uh, that is about the threshold. You start going below that, I start to get concerned about the performance of this weapon. You start going higher, you start going over, say, 800 rounds a minute, you're going to have concerns about conserving ammunition and things and blowing through your clips. For me, between 7 and 800 seems to be the sweet spot for me and my performance and the roles I play, uh, as well as, you know, when you consider what this weapon is designed for and best used as, as I will get into, 700 rounds per minute is, is perfectly respectable it has very good muzzle velocity at 650 meters a second that's second only to the aug a3 again when you consider the, the role that this weapon is designed for that's very very good very good maximum distance at 970 meters second again only to the aug a3 and again it correlates very nicely to the usage of this weapon very good tactical re recoil at about two seconds that's on the high end for assault rifles very nice you know you're not going to get too many deaths due to reloading at least on the tactical reload I'll get to the, the empty reload in a second. It also has manageable recoil stats as 0.5 vertical and a 0.2 and 0.2 horizontal. So basically it's a 0.5 vertical and it adds up to about a 0.4 horizontal. That's how I like to quickly compare. Very manageable. The horizontal recoil is actually pretty good but it's nicely balanced both ways. Uh, the vertical recoil is a little high when you look at it on paper. But we know that vertical recoil is secondary. It's pretty easy to manage both through mouse you know, compensation as well as through attachments. A uh, very good first shot recoil at 1.6. The L85 is just a hair better, but you also got to consider L85 fires a little bit faster. So these two come in at about the same. Again, considering the role I'm going to recommend this weapon for you, that's a very good statistic to excel at. Now let's take a look at some of the cons for the AR-160. The vertical recoil is kind of high at 0.5, as I mentioned, but again, we do know that that can be managed. But as you compare this to its peers on paper, the 0.5 vertical recoil is a little bit high. The empty reload is not great. It's kind of middle of the pack. It's like 3.15 or something like that. So my recommendation here obviously is do not run your magazines dry. Spread increase per shot is relatively high, uh, so if you're going to be holding this thing down at any kind of automatic fire, you're going to see your spread increase pretty rapidly, but again, when I talk to you about the usage of this weapon, you should not be using the automatic uh, fire with this weapon too much. ADS on the move is not that great, but that's again kind of be expected for the role of this weapon. It's not a huge difference in game. Now again, this is comparing the numbers on paper to other assault rifles on paper. It's not that great. It's a little higher than the others, but again, as you get into the game, I don't really know that you feel these differences on certain statistics, but I do like to point it out in there just to kind of see where some of these weapons do differentiate from each other. Now, let's talk about the recommended usage for the AR-160. This is clearly a medium and outrange weapon. You should only be using this in medium range engagements. I shouldn't say only, uh, but you should really be looking to get into medium range engagements with this gun. That is where the weapon excels. Uh, the, with a passive play style, cover to cover, that types of stuff. I've talked about that with the L85. I've talked about that with the Scar H. This is in that same family, same role. Now, with a 700 rate of fire, you can go in and do your work up close. It's going to be disadvantaged to other up close type weapons like the AEK or the Ace 23, but it's perfectly, you know, it's 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 able to do the job. Uh, unlike say like a SAR 21, where you're really just going to want to at all times stay medium plus range out. You can theoretically sit here at medium range, cover to cover, clear off an MCOM. Realize it's secure, then make your move up to, re uh, to arm that MCOM. Whereas, say, with a SAR-21, I wouldn't really recommend that too much. You're going to lose a lot of gunfights up close with the SAR-21. This gun it can do its job up close, but where you're really going to have your advantages is from medium distances and out. The high muzzle velocity, the low first shot recoil, the manageable recoil, it really makes this gun a medium range killer. It excels in that role. If you don't play that style, don't try to fit a tool into the wrong job, pick another weapon. But if you're like me, who likes to play a little passively, cover to cover, a little slower these days in Battlefield 4, this is a very, very good weapon for that role. Now let's talk a little bit about my recommended loadout, my attachments. For the optic, uh, like every weapon it's seemingly in Battlefield 4, at least in the Assault, Carbine, those types of classes, any RDS is fine, as well as hollow uh, sights. 
I do prefer the Coyote, the Cobra, and the HD33. Haven't really settled on one for this weapon particularly, because let me just tell you, I have about 500, uh, it's got to be just about somewhere around 500 kills with this weapon. The Cobra, HD33, and the Coyote Sight are all still locked to me. You know they're going to come in that last battle pack. It's incredibly frustrating. Uh, I've been running around with the Hollow Sight just because I prefer that a lot better than the RDS Sight. Uh, both have very limited, you know, the, the, the lining around the optic. It's, it's very frustrating. I'm looking forward to getting either the Cobra, the Coyote, or the HD33. But all of them kind of fill the same roles. You guys know that's, you know, similar drill with every weapon. For the barrel, and this is where things get a little interesting. Uh, I've been using the muzzle brake. I'm trying to bring down that vertical recoil. I told you the vertical recoil was a little bit higher. Some of you might be hesitating. Say, oh, but it kind of affects your spread. Well, when you with this weapon, you should not be using automatic fire. And where you see that detriment to the muzzle brake... Uh, where it kind of adds to your spread. That's really with automatic fire. When you fire in longer bursts, you start to see that expansion. I don't recommend you use automatic fire with this weapon. You should be tap firing this weapon so that it mitigates some of that, you know, detriment to the muzzle brake and really helps you kind of with that vertical recoil. Suppressors will nerf the uh, main strength of this weapon. Again, the muzzle velocity is like 650. That's very, very high. It's like number one, uh, number two or number three. Again, it's only second to the AUG A3. You slap a suppressor on this, you kind of kill some of the personality of this weapon. You kill some of the, you know, the positive you know, really with this gun to excel. So I wouldn't recommend that. If you really want to use a suppressor, I would probably choose another gun. A uh, flash hider, of course, never hurts. If you're unsure of anything, throw a flash hider on it, use this gun for a while, and kind of use your attachments further based on your situation and your, and your engagements. Under barrel again is where it gets a little interesting. I've been using the angle foregrip to bring down that first shot recoil even more. Now I told you the first shot recoil was very good. It's it's kind of only second to the L85, which is just a hair better. So it's not fully necessary. But when you look at the other kind of choices, I go with the angle grip just to enhance that again. Again, based on the role I'm using this weapon. Um, let's take a look at the ergo grip. Um, if you strafe a lot, this could be okay. But again, this weapon is going to be more used for stationary, medium engagements. You want to be standing still firing. This way you ensure you get the best statistics out of this weapon, you get the best performance out of this weapon. So an ergo grip isn't really going to help you. Sure, it may help you as you kind of, like I said, you clear an area for medium range, then you move up to arm that MCOM. But I don't really like to kind of outfit my weapons based on their weaknesses. I like to kind of enhance their, you know, their, their potential uh, as, as medium range kind of killers, especially given my playstyle. Again, stubby vertical. This is something you guys might have thought, you know, blowing that bloom. Again, you really only get the benefits of the stubby grip when you're firing automatic fire. So there's not a lot to benefit from this because, again, I'm recommending you use tap fire. You should be tap firing this gun and compensating through your mouse and through the muzzle brake, through the angle foregrip for the vertical recoil. And that's going to make this thing really a headshot machine and really, really super accurate. Accessory, again, is kind of open to you. You're not really going to hurt yourself too much as far as the gun goes. Magnifier seems like an uh, obvious option here. Again, extending your range out even further. This thing has a very nice max range. It is capable of hitting people at long ranges, as you'll see in some of the footage. Uh, magnifier is a good uh, choice here. Sometimes I don't like it. It gets in the way. Even when it's flipped out of the side, it just kind of blocks some of your peripheral. Uh, that's a personal opinion there. It's up to you guys. Uh, laser sight, if you're very good about turning it on and off, you can always throw this on. I'm not very good at that. I always forget one way or the other. Um, sure, it could help you as you assault that MCOM like I've talked about but again that's kind of you know at the danger of leaving it on and you're medium long range and you're giving away your position uh, make that judgment based on your own you know abilities and your play style to summarize this weapon, this weapon's a very good weapon. It particularly fits my playstyle very well. It's kind of a jack-of-all-trades of that medium-range weapon. Now, we talked about the Scar H, heavy hitter, really fast time to kill. Got a limited magazine for those close engagements. Um, SAR-21, very limited. I don't really care for that weapon very much. Again, it's a longer-range weapon. L85, a uh, little too high of a fire rate. I know they've nerfed that back down now, but you know, kind of chews up ammunition a little bit for me. Uh, it has some different... Uh, Performance issues. AUG A3, again, it's, it's, it's got a lot of really good uh, assets to it, but it's got some all flaws. This one seems to be kind of be a jack-of-all-trades, master of none in that medium-range category. I really enjoy it. Use this weapon passively. Use it for medium-range. Tap fire, tap fire, tap fire. Uh, control the recoil, uh, again, i.e. the tap fire. Control zones in the map. This isn't a door kicker. You want to kind of set up, control, pick out a firing lane, and pick off the enemy as they're trying to assault your team that might be arming the MCOM or something like that. Uh, again, think passive. I, I don't like to use the word defensive uh, play style because that's not really true. Again, passive, cover to cover, kind of set yourself up, let the enemy come at you, and chew them up with a highly accurate weapon. I've been really enjoying using this weapon a lot. Um, continue to use it. It's quickly going up the rankings of my my you know my favorites um it's kind of probably number two number three right there now i'm still partial to scar h 
but it, it kind of gives me a good decision when I want a little more magazine capacity and things like that. So definitely check this weapon out, guys. It's very, very easy to unlock, and uh, give it a whirl. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out. I appreciate all the support, guys. Thanks so much. I will talk to you soon. Take care.